Welcome to our next talk. Now we're listening on privacy on the semantic net. Let's have a social network with XMMPP. And uh, we'll listen to Jan. He will help this talk. Yeah. Thanks for the introduction. <laughs> Thanks for the introduction. My name is Jan Torben. Um, from the Institute for, uh, for Geoinformatics uh, in Münster. And uh, today I will talk about privacy in the semantic web. And I will introduce a social network approach based on XMPP. So let me first tell you why I give this talk. Um, the current ideas and the work <coughs> I'm presenting are basing on my diploma thesis or master thesis for those of you who are not familiar with the traditional German education system. Um, and I want today uh, try to open the project for the non-academic users, so maybe some of you or mostly uh, maybe your friends, people that are not very uh, interested in technical details but may care a bit about privacy and security but don't know really what this, all, what this stuff is all about. Um, I would like to discuss later on uh, my work with interested people. I got a few emails from you. Um, thank you for that. And I hope to meet some of you later on. So that was my motivation. And I will talk, uh, I've divided my talk in two sections. First, I will talk a bit about privacy, social semantic, all these uh, funny words. Maybe not all of you know what semantic web is, or have no, maybe some of you have no idea what really privacy means, or how we, can you define it. And finally, I'll introduce shortly my friend-to-friend -friend architecture, so a social network which is between friends, but not on, her, on not um, maintained by companies like Google, Yahoo, Facebook, or the Holzbring here in Germany, which owns the popular StudiVZ. So, what is a social network? I don't know. If, is, is here anyone who is not member of one of these social networks? Wow! <laughs> Great. <laughs> Uh, is here one of you who would not be able to program a Twitter? Uh, no one. <laughs> so what is all this stuff about? Why are so many people using social networks? And why is this such a buzzword? Um, the social networks I presented here, are just some of them are very different. So uh, delicious, for example, is just uh, social bookmarking, social tagging, it's uh, very different to maybe MySpace, where you can uh, present yourself, uh, what you do in the evening, upload photos, whatever, music, and totally prostitute yourself. <laughs> so, what is a social network? Uh, is it really something new? Didn't we have that before? So, what changed in the last year so the social network came up? Does it use any technology which is new? Flash is, I don't know how old Flash is. JavaScript, oh my god. Ajax, maybe funny, uh, but I don't think it's something very special uh, in social networks. So, is it show social because it's written for the people? I'm not sure. M guess some of them are mainly written because of the money you can make of them. So I think it is social because of the people who use it. And the people, and so in my eyes, the people who are using the internet today differ from the users maybe 10 years ago. There were only academics or technology geeks, like I think we are. But uh, today, my mother is using the internet, or my cousin is using the internet, and in a totally different way. So my cousin uh, wanted to send me some photos for Christmas, but he was not able to send an attachment with an email. It was completely new to him. So although we are both using the internet, he's using the internet in a completely different way. So we tried to give me some Schülerfaustet link, which I don't know. That's nothing I use. Uh, so we ended up uh, in 
using traditional uh, CD-ROMs. Uh, okay, so as I said, all kinds of people use the internet and most of them are not really interested in technical details. So they just want to use a social network because they can uh, don't know, talk to the friends of everyday life or uh, exchange photos, whatever, but uh, they never had the idea what, what it means to upload all your stuff to one company in order to share it with the friends. So. They use it because social applications are easy to use. Uh, your data is always on the web, accessible from everywhere, maybe by everyone, <laughs> depends on uh, the site you use. And your real life and your online life get connected. Yeah? So when I went to school, pff, a few people used the internet and I never, came, uh, I never had the idea to only use the internet to contact with them. So we had telephone or <laughs> whatever. Uh, or that's uh, our meeting points in real life. And uh, finally, you can make thousands of connections to new virtual friends. <laughs> Don't know if they're really uh, real friends. Uh, so in the meaning as we use it normally, uh, if we speak to people in real life. So, but you can uh, maintain a, a big list of friends for whatever reason you want to do that can say I have a thousand friends on MySpace and everyone is so, such a nice guy. So in all these people who are using the social networks really don't know about security or privacy issues as I mentioned before. And I think it's a bit, a bit the responsibility of people who are more concerned about this stuff to propose alternatives to the current social networks. So that is my motivation, that was my motivation for my diploma thesis, and that is my motivation why I'm speaking here to you today. So privacy, what is privacy about? Privacy is about the personal data you store in social networks. So maybe profiles on MySpace, bookmarks on Delicious, whatever you store in such social networks, can somehow affect your privacy. You don't know today what uh, can happen to the data you generate today, you store today. Maybe you uh, have a certain disease and you try to inform yourself about the disease and maybe join a group on Facebook or whatever. Uh, and maybe uh, some company where you want to work later on gets um, the, get the knowledge about it and um, maybe this company decides not to hire you for that reason because of the disease you have and maybe it's a disease which affects you in the way you can work uh, in, in a few years. And just imagine uh, this is a genetic disease and maybe your children in 50 years won't get hired for that reason. So we are the first generation in the information century and I think um, the, the danger cannot foreseen yet. The danger of just uh, putting all your stuff into the internet, maybe one of you, some of you know uh, the stuff from Google where you can maintain your medical records, it's mainly for an American citizen. And I think that's something we really don't want to have here in Germany or we want to have in any country, that one company gets the, all this knowledge about you. So, but privacy is not only about the content you explicitly store in such social networks, but also about um, what you do, what you visit the pages. Many people which I've talked to uh, didn't know what is possible with the user tracking software today. So for example, double click each page that uh, has uh, um, advertisements from double click, um, has, uh, knows which pages you visit after and after and so on. Same stuff with Google, uh, Google Analytics. And so keep track about which pages you visit. And I think this is, this is also something going on in social networks that they explicitly store which page you visited, uh, to, to what time, to which people you had contact and so on. Um, I have some uh, friends who work in the advertisement business and uh, when they talk about activity on the internet they, they really want to, to have this knowledge 
to which people which would uh, use which pages and when do they buy which stuff and so on and yeah so third there's another privacy uh, there's another way where we use privacy for example what others uh, publish about me so many users are concerned about uh, party photos on uh, Facebook or StudioFootZ uh, uploaded by friends. But I won't cover this issue, it's not a te technical one. I think you should discuss it with your friends if they upload photos about you. And I'm not going to present a technical solution for it. So privacy in the social semantic web. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what is the semantic web? Do you know what, who of you knows semantic web, the term? Oh, great. <laughs> That's enough. Okay. <laughs> uh, the semantic web. The vision was originally from Tim Berners-Lee. Berners-Lee? I hope it's not wrong. So he said he had a vision about a machine-readable inter machine internet. So you don't just publish your pages or blogs or whatever in plain HTML, but you uh, give all the content you publish a meaning. And this is uh, uh, the semantic web. <sighs> it's a bit complicated. Many, um, many academic people uh, are doing research in this area and for many years now we haven't moved really much uh, but each year a bit and I think the semantic web will come and even if it's not coming for the people um, we still have the technology to analyze information in social networks for example the company who owns it uh, can use uh, semantic web technologies to um, to analyze uh, what I said before, which user uh, reads which pages and which user is interested in which music and so on. And so even if the semantic web is not coming for, for everyone and will make um, the internet to a big database which everyone can crawl or however, um, we still have to keep in mind that some, the semantic web technologies will be always there and available to whoever wants to use it as long as he has the data. So one example for those of you who are not very familiar with the semantic web are the FOAF profiles. I think the most used semantic web schema, however you want to call it, someone calls it an ontology, don't want to argue at this point. So the four of profiles are um, just like a profile page where can you where you can uh, describe yourself, so your email address, your uh, don't know ICQ number or whatever. And the interesting part is you can link to other people four of profiles and say I know this person who has a four of profile at this URL and so on. And so you get a, a huge network of friends who know each other, friends of friends and so on. And this is the idea of the semantic web to have uh, different um, documents describing some entity, maybe a person or don't know, a band or uh, a bookmark or whatever. And you can link between these. So the goal of the semantic web is to aggregate, uh, aggregate and combine information from different sources. And I think here is uh, the big privacy issue we have uh, or we have to face uh, in the next years because that's certainly something we don't want. We don't want that every social network gets connected to every other social network. So maybe you want to separate your private Facebook account from your LinkedIn account or uh, for the German example, Xing and uh, StudiVZ or whatever. Uh, so the current technology uh, we have, so the current technology that you have uh, companies who maintain the social networks uh, and may share the data with others in future. Uh, this is an architect architecture which uh, I really, that's my privacy concern. Yeah. So, how can we protect our privacy today or tomorrow? If you suggest to your friends not to use social networks, I think they won't listen to you. Uh, and I know that many people uh, who are concerned about their privacy use social networks anyway because they don't want to lose the contact to others. 
So the issue, I think, is the architecture. The architecture that there is a central database where users store their information in order to share it with friends. Uh, and the user does not know uh, what the provider does or what he will do with the data in future. And I think we need another architecture. And as you may, as you may think, this is based on XMPP. So here's, an, uh, again, just, just a picture. I will compare it to another one later. Uh, about uh, social networks with, uh, which have a central server. Every uh, person can store the data on it. And that's a problem. Yeah? We have a central place, uh, which we don't want to have. But we want that data exchange is only between friends. Yeah? So there is no party in between that has some, uh, no part in between to to store the data or to provide an API or whatever. So, and of course, all trans transmissions must be encrypted. I think that's clear. So, the XMPP network uh, consists of uh, some servers in the internet which are only responsible for communication. I will later argue uh, why I use XMPP and not some, some other peer to peer or whatever network. So, and each user can connect to, to um, one of the servers gets an address and so on, and can connect uh, to everyone else. It's an uh, extensible uh, instant messaging protocol, and it's not true peer-to-peer, -peer, which you might have expected when talking about privacy and friend-to-friend -friend connections, uh, for a simple reason that um, the XMPP networks can ensure communication between friends or peers, whatever, even if they are both behind packet filters, firewalls, uh, routers, however you want to call it, uh, which is, I think, a uh, common co configuration uh, for most people. And um, uh, to go into details, uh, you can't tell your friend to, to open a port, maybe, just as you do it for your file sharing software, maybe. Uh, just in order to uh, run a social network or to communicate with others. So I think we, need, we still need um, an architecture like in the XMPP network that you always have a server where you can connect to in order to uh, exchange messages. But um, the difference to uh, service in networks like um, Facebook or whatever is that um, the servers of the XMPP network don't have to to know about the information you exchange. They just route the messages. And uh, as you know, uh, messages are always rooted in the internet. Um, so every router your message passes uh, can, be, can, can read the message. So it doesn't matter that there is a special XMPP server besides all the other hops in the internet where your message came across. Um, so we can use end-to-end -end encryption between friends. And uh, PGP, you all know PGP, I think. Uh, we had some talks or it's mentioned, yeah, I think uh, you know it. So, um, but there's one problem. PGP isn't widely used yet. For whatever reason, I think it's complicated to use and uh, I don't uh, use it very often and only uh, if I send emails to, to friends where I know they use PGP. So if not, I even don't sign my messages. And I think we, the main challenge we have on the one hand is really to implement a user-friendly PGP support. Um, I don't have an answer yet, um, but maybe some ideas we can discuss later. So my current prototype uh, from the diploma thesis is just a social bookmark sharing application. So maybe like Delicious or uh, Pepsonomy, if you know it. You can create bookmarks and tag them, and um, you can recursively uh, crawl for tagged bookmarks in the network of friends. And this, can you see it? OK, on the left, you see uh, the demo application which shows your personal network. Just a simple one. You have a few friends, and you can maybe see friends of friends, and you can search for tagged uh, for, for tech bookmarks and get a list. It's a bit Google-like, I would say, or uh, I think they've been the first one with a simple interface to be familiar to to other users. And my idea, or what I want, is to um, 
take this prototype and build a um, social network um, library or whatever, or how you want to call it. Um, don't care about the Java stuff and it may be look ugly to uh, some of you. <laughs> Many people don't like Java, no discussion about that. It's an uh, academic language. Um, using some, uh, so the main reason to use it was uh, there have been a lot of libraries I could build up. So the Java 6 web start application is it, and it uses this CSME ADF database. If someone, maybe someone is also using uh, the ADF stuff with Java, you know that. Um, the SMAC API is an XMPP implementation, and the Prefuse pre visual Visualization Toolkit is used for the social graphs. So, to come to my open challenges, how can a serverless network, serverless network survive? So what happens if all contacts go offline? What do we do then? That's a bit difficult. We can do some caching strategies, but uh, it's not easy to implement. Um, it's ongoing work. And as I said, how can PGP be implemented in a secure but user-friendly way? That's really my main concern about all the stuff. So and if you are interested uh, maybe to extend the current Java approach or to write another client which can be maybe a web interface. So one idea is to have a local server uh, which does the XMPP stuff and serves web pages to your local browser. Or what I really would like to see is an instant messenger extension because I think many people are familiar with instant messaging software. Or maybe a flash application could look a bit nicer <laughs> than the Java stuff. Uh, or a mobile application, I think. Um, or the other way around. Uh, I saw a poster here on one of the doors uh, showing some ideas about XMPP and uh, location sharing or so. Does one of, did you recognize it? I don't know. Okay, um, I think for mobile application, uh, it's really uh, a killer application uh, to share your location with friends. That's certainly something I don't want to share with any provider. So I don't want to have Google a track of my location during, I uh, don't know, or the whole time, or whole life maybe, just to know which friends of me or friends of mine are uh, near. So that. I think that's um, something, especially for the mobile application, uh, interesting. So, if you have any questions, thanks for your attention. Maybe some details, more technical details. I, I listened to your talk and I was um, wondering why you didn't choose to peer-to-peer uh, -peer networks because I think they scale a lot better. We have a lot of peer-to-peer -peer technology developed. Like, for example, the Skype network, you can traverse nets, that's no problem anymore. And I think data storage would be much easier, like using distributed hash tables. And so there's technologies for using that, so um, why do you think XMMPP is a better choice? Uh, I don't know, what's Sky, Skynet, sorry? Skype. Sk ah, Skype, okay. Um, I don't know uh, about the technology that uh, Skype uses, but um, normally in peer-to-peer -peer networks, you have a situation that you try to connect to as many other clients as possible, yeah, right? So to get a high bandwidth, to get uh, as much information as possible that are in the network. Um, but I think you really want, uh, in, from, for social networks, you really want to uh, start at your friends. You, know, you want to connect to your friends first, and maybe you are not interested in what, what other people have, what other people have, um, what, other, uh, what other content is available in the network. But uh, I'm interested, if you have a few minutes time afterwards, maybe you can tell me a bit what, what the advantages of Skype are. Uh, I, I don't know who's next, who has a microphone. Um, I got a few suggestions because um, you said you want to use GPG. Um, GPG, which is uh, XEP27, is already deprecated 
And as you already said, key exchange is very complicated, and this is uh, why there's work on other standards. There is the uh, e-session standards, which has been deferred because it is uh, too complicated to implement. <laughs> and there's yeah, now work on XTLS, and uh, I think this would be the way to go for this. And um, there is uh, work to make it very easy to verify the keys. Um, it's, uh, the design is um, thought of to be as uh, easy as possible so that you can even uh, instant message with your grandmother and you just need to call her and uh, verify a short string. That is uh, how it's done in e-sessions as well. But uh, unfortunately, there's no uh, working XTLS implementation in any client yet, as far as I know. There's only e-sessions support in Gadgem. And um, yeah, it seems the e-sessions uh, idea, which is uh, very similar to how XTLS will work once it's finished, seems to be very easy to uh, be used. And uh, another um, advantage you get by that is um, XEP27 only allows you to encrypt the body of a message dancer, while um, e-sessions allow you to encrypt the whole dancer and uh, um, XTLS even allows you to encrypt IQ stencils and other st uh, stencils like presents. You can even uh, send them directed then. And um, another suggestion I have is uh, that you use uh, PubSub, for example, to uh, publish the list of friends of friends or to exchange photos, and etc. Okay, thanks for your uh, ideas. Um, as I know, uh, PGP is uh, deprecated, deprecated or not really usable in, um, in, uh, in XMPP. So uh, I just, for the first prototype, implemented my own PGP add-on. But uh, the idea to also uh, encrypt uh, message stances and so and IQ stances, uh, it's a good idea. Thanks. Um. You pointed out um, your goal to uh, share information only with friends. Yes. And I wonder about uh, whether you consider friendship to be a, a transitive relation, that is, friends of friends are your friends too, and uh, whether you consider it to be uh, invariant over time, so that someone who has been your friend uh, three years ago is still your friend. Yeah, trust is a, a big issue. Uh, I don't know if you know the PGP trust model. Um, it's not really used. It's also about transitive friendships and so on. Um, for my bookmark sharing application, I, I count the, the number of transitivity or whatever you want to call it. So you can uh, skip at a certain degree. So maybe only three hops uh, in, your, in your network of friends or whatever. So there's a, a difference between friends of friends and true friends uh, to, and direct friends. And you can maybe say uh, 10 or more, uh, a distance of 10 or more is too much for, for friends of friends transitivity. And I want to, to skip here or to break. Um, so, yeah, sorry, um, you wanted to know who can decide uh, um, the, the transitivity, yes? So who can decide uh, when, to, when to skip uh, in, the, uh, in the chain of friends? Um, first of all, as a person who wants to give out information can decide if he really wants to give out the information to, to the one who is asking. So if you receive a, a query from uh, one of your friends, you see who originally sent the query, you know, so because it's signed uh, by PGP, of course. And then you can decide uh, if he may access the information or not. And on the other hand, if you send an information to friends, uh, to, you send a query to friends, you maybe don't want uh, others to reach the query because it's too, you know, you don't even want that uh, other people know about the query you sent. Other questions? Um, I absolutely second your opinion about the PGP not being user-friendly enough. Um, we're all techies here and pretty savvy with, with technology, but users, real users are not, and they are not able to use PGP in any way. Um, so why do you insist on using PGP and not try to find some other way to encrypt data, like uh, off-the-record encryption, um, which also reduces uh, the 
one problem PGP causes, which is plausible deniability, where you have a signed message so you can track it back to the originator, which you probably do not want to have possible, but only encrypt the full text message, but without having it explicitly signed, so it cannot be tracked back to the to the original author. So, um, is off the record encryption, isn't it just an uh, addition to any public private key encryption? Or maybe I got it wrong? As far as I know, it's a session based uh, asymmetric encryption method. So, um, you don't have, you have a different set of keys for every session you use it. Un unlike PGP. Okay. So, but if you want to, to trust uh, your communication partner, you have uh, some, uh, at some time, you have to verify, uh, you, have, you must verify him. So if you use off the record encryption, you can just be sure no one can, um, can alter your, the messages uh, in your communication, but you cannot ensure that the one you are communicating to is really the one who claims it to be. So it's, yeah. So that, I think off the point. record encryption uh, can be used and it's useful, but you always need to, to verify your communication partner and that's the crucial part, or the, the, com uh, the complicated part in uh, PGP encryption. Yes, uh, through microphone. Okay, oh, okay get it first because then I'll give mm. the microphone to you. Uh, Michi Lenas from NLNet Foundation. So basically, uh, there's besides XMPP, you have SIP Simple, and they, it offers a, it's, it's another ITF standard that offers presence, which is a feature would, would would be very helpful to have the sort of linked in type of updates to your to your friends without being centrally controlled. Basically, mm -hmm. you own uh, individual atomic relationships with each and everybody without it being visible to anybody else. Um, and the second is, if there's anybody working on this uh, in the audience, please contact me afterwards because I work for a funding agency. We fund this type of stuff. So we fund uh, many uh, different projects, Mingle, Jingle, um, a SIP Simple Client and so on. So if people are working on this and are, are able to do the encryption layer on top of this, uh, please uh, talk to me afterwards. Great. <coughs> Hi. I'm just curious, uh, the title of the talk said the uh, social semantic web. Uh, okay, you are using CSAMI, an uh, mm -hmm. RDF-based middleware which is used uh, within semantic technologies, but uh, did you use something else uh, out of the semantic technology sector in your application? For example, did you define an ontology to reason about who is whose friend or I don't know? Uh, I am missing the semantic part. Yeah, this is uh, the, my question. Uh, I've took the semantic part a bit out of the presentation. It was the main focus of my diploma thesis, but uh, I didn't know if all the audience, uh, the audience is interested in it. So um, the semantic part was uh, in the tagging application, yeah, so that you can uh, link your tags, which uh, you can treat as local concepts, to other uh, vocabularies. So in SCOS or whatever you want, or some WordNet stuff or whatever. And so you can, on the one hand, uh, search on a label ba base, or you can search for concepts or deeper concepts or whatever. So and that was. So you defined an ontology for your data and? Yeah, I uh, used the tag ontology from ah, Tom okay. Gruber. Maybe you know it. Yeah. I'm very excited about this project, especially the PDP. I also want to say Skype is not how to do it because that has a centralized system and that's how it can be blocked. And a PDP is important because it can be used for, for other issues like email and web pages and encryption. So it's important to get something like PDP out because it will empower people to do a lot more stuff. And, and I think it's not the technical things that's stopping, it's how to, uh, to use it. I was to a conference in Denmark where Arto has social network was saying, but because they want to fight people making fake profiles of classmates and so on, they started to verify users. They wanted to use social security numbers, which of course is extremely bad from a privacy issue. And we also have some friend uh, verification where we can you verify your, your friends. And PDP is just a much better way of doing that. 
in a secure and, and better way. So I think that's great. Uh, sorry, I wasn't able to get the key idea of your comment. Was it uh, too? I uh, just want to comment that I, I think PTP <laughs> is, is important, and I think it's important to have a, a way of feeling that the users get some value out of it. That you get value out of verifying your, your friend. You know, it's, it's, it's a social thing, but you want to have many friends, and you should be able to sell the network with the web of trust as a, a good thing in itself and a motivation for people to use it. And I think that could really work. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I didn't. Uh, was it a question? Or uh, I'm sorry, it was very difficult to hear it. Uh, sorry. Okay, okay. <laughs> Other questions? <laughs> sorry. Um, so. The one oh. hurdle to adoption of this stuff that seems obvious to me is the persistence problem that uh, you sort of mentioned briefly that what happens when people go offline, their data is gone. So are you aware of any technologies, any work being done that could be used to overcome that, for example, by defining a way for caching data somewhere in the cloud for, say, a limited amount of time and possibly with encryption wrapped around it, which means that the person doing the caching doesn't necessarily have access to the content. Yes, that uh, are two ideas. One is some kind of data store where you can put encrypted packets and give your friends a key to it. Or another option is to let your friends cache your data which they retrieved before or however. Um, you will always have the problem of uh, versioning conflicts or whatever which you have to deal with. Um, and I stopped at that point because I think that's um, something which has to be solved more deeper in the semantic layer, in the semantic web layer, so versioning of RDF triples or whatever. And for my diploma thesis that was simply too much and so I stopped at the caching stuff and yeah. It's for later. More? Yeah. Um, I think this problem is actually addressed by DHT. So if you would take a look into Kademli or Pastry, for example, you will already find um, applications that will give you um, distributed storage. And uh, the next step to implement a secure distributed storage is not that difficult if you're using some encryption scheme. Uh, which is uh, able to give each friend the key, but not um, giving the key to the public. Um, so maybe the DHT approach or the real peer-to-peer -peer approach will solve not only the problem of uh, connecting uh, between users, but also the storage problem. Yeah, then you have the problem uh, if you, for ex you can, for example, sign only the whole block of information. So you can, uh, if you cache a whole block of information for your friend, you can only give out the whole block, um, but not parts of it. Um, maybe not a problem, maybe a problem. Uh, you have to think about it. Yeah. Uh, microphones. Yeah. Me? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, to me, for um, social networks, uh, one important thing is to uh, reach a critical mass to get enough information. For example, if you think of things, uh, project la like uh, Last.fm, mm -hmm. um, you can participately uh, uh, create a, an interesting database, but uh, you can link all the information to the people. And I'm wondering to which extent it would be possible to use uh, your scheme to try to generate something big like this because if you are only using friends or friend of a friend, um, you're getting stuck and you can't reach enough information to get this critical mass. Okay, you mean if I use the application it's difficult to get the to all other information because I can only go from friends or friends to friends or friends? Yeah. 
Okay. Um, I did some research. You know the small word phenomenon. So uh, on Facebook, um, s someone um, calculated that most people are only f five to eight steps away. So I think from a friend to friend perspective, it would be possible but costly to, to reach nearly all information available with this approach. But it definitely needs some caching. Um, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So you don't want to send one query to, to the whole network. Uh. I've got a comment to what you just said about um, signing the whole block of information. Mm -hmm. um, you can easily solve that problem with uh, hash trees. So you have a tree where you have mm -hmm. several smaller blocks which are signed and you sign the hashes of those hashes and um, then you only have one central hash that you sign and uh, you don't have to hand out the whole information. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I um, also think that DHTs are exactly what you're looking for for the persistence part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, different suggestion about the caching part because I think this is actually solved in XMPP because XMPP has a server-side technology that's called PubSub and it's basically a storage of data that you can subscribe to. So PubSub is publish and subscribe and one person can publish data and everybody else can say everybody who's your friend or you can write this them or whatever can say I want that data. So it's stored on the server and you could if you want also encrypt it but basically you can fairly granularly um, say only my friends or only the people in my roster can access this data or people on the whitelist can access this data. And this also works if you're offline. So that would probably solve that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, did you uh, uh, took a look uh, uh, at some uh, uh, mostly uh, duple space based solutions out of the semantic community? <laughs> They are not very useful, but I think they maybe deliver some ideas for uh, at least for the, the data delivery approach or the data propagation approach. What was the name? Sorry. The, uh, in the semantic community, there are uh, various space-based, uh, uh, space-based uh, ah, okay. space uh, uh, projects in development, which uh, uh, partly address the problems you are you have for example, uh, which are very similar to what you have written. Mm -hmm. But do not uh, use uh, uh, own protocols to, to uh, connect the peers. They use uh, existing peer-to-peer -peer technology. Okay. If you are interested, mm -hmm. I yeah. can of tell you some of the project. Mm -hmm. So more questions, remarks? Okay, then I want to thank you for the f oh, sorry. Um, I'm not sure if your approach is in the same league as the existing social networks because you have kind of an exclusive approach. People have to know maybe the unique identifier of someone who they yeah. want to become friends with. And the, the traditional approach to social networks is more like open and inclusive. Like you, you get to know people on Last.fm because they share the musical taste. And you cannot do that with your approach. So that may be a, a limit to um, the appeal your approach has. Maybe the nerd and hacker type <laughs> might like that <laughs> because you, you have a real friends network with people you really know. But what social networks are about is not getting in contact with people you really know in real life, but to, to broaden your, your friendship. And I'm not sure how your scheme applies to that. Yeah, it wouldn't apply to maybe MySpace or whatever, something different, but um, so sh this, uh, this content sharing stuff like Delicious or maybe Bipsonomy, which focus more on research papers or whatever. I think uh, in this part, it's interesting to know what your friends have at what, what content your friends provide and so on. And maybe it's possible to implement a MySpace-like social network based on XMPP, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, but it's, it's a hard way to go, it's a long way to really implement a fancy social network.
more, more, more. Okay, then uh, thank you, those of you. If you had comments and suggested some cool new feature or link or whatever, please use the feedback system. Huh? Would be glad to also hear something about the, the um, stuff in general. So whatever you want, just drop me a note or ask me now.